and 8 Central. The Diane Sawyer Special on ABC. You're watching WQOW News 18 Eau Claire. From your hometown team, this is the 10 p.m. Report. Thanks for being with us this Sunday evening. I'm Andrea Elbers. First at 10, residents in the northwestern part of the state are cleaning up after a fierce storm that killed an 11-year-old girl. One of the hardest hit areas was in northern Burnett County. This is the scene in Danbury. Burnett County officials say the town will probably not have power for the next couple of days. Friday night's storm toppled trees that killed a young girl from Hinkle, Minnesota, as she tried to escape the severe weather. One man who owns an outdoor fireworks stand says some saw its shelter in a nearby casino when the storm hit. We started seeing the trees snap as uh, we went to this first corner over here. And uh, when we got into Danbury, um, we could hardly see two feet in front of us. More than a dozen others were injured, three of them critically hurt. They were airlifted to hospitals in St. Paul and Eau Claire. County officials say there were thousands of visitors in the area when the storms hit for the 4th of July weekend. Nearby, the National Weather Service has confirmed that a tornado touched down near Solon Springs. The worst damage seen by Weather Survey Service team was consistent with an EF2 tornado, packing winds at up to 130 miles per hour. A few people were hurt during Friday's storm, but luckily no one was killed. Never been through anything like this before in my life, and I hope to God I never do it again. The tornado was the first to hit Douglas County since 1998. A 22-year-old St. Paul man has died after an early morning boating accident in Polk County. The sheriff's office says the deputies received a 911 call of a possible drowning on Antler Lake in Milltown Township around 3.30 a.m. this morning. Crews performed CPR before the man was taken to St. Croix Regional Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. Investigators say the man and four of his friends were on the lake when their boat capsized. One member of the group located the victim underwater and brought him to shore. Clark County authorities are looking into a traffic crash that claimed the life of a Nielsville woman. Crews were called to a crash Saturday afternoon on Highway 73 near Nielsville. A vehicle had lost control, gone into the ditch, and struck a power pole. Both driver and passenger were extricated from the vehicle. The passenger, 89-year-old Virginia Neuendorf, later died from her injuries. This is the fourth traffic fatality for Clark County in 2011. Switching gears now, let's turn our attention to the weather. A pretty great weekend so far. A lot of people hoping that will carry on through the holiday tomorrow. Let's bring in meteorologist Alex Kirchner. Well, good evening, Andrea. And if you enjoy the weather that we had for today, the 4th, which is right around the corner, is going to look almost picture perfect because we're going to have almost a mirror image day ahead tomorrow, possibly a few degrees warmer. And now a good 24 hours from now, you're getting ready for the fireworks. These are the temperatures you'll be seeing. Uh, these are the current temperatures as of right now. Middle 70s, very comfortable outside as of this evening. And really not much going on when it comes to the satellite and radar. The skies are staying pretty clear over the Chippewa Valley. There is some cloud cover passing to the south of us, but that should stay south of us. And we're going to continue to have the clear skies all throughout the evening hours uh, down to 61 by sunrise and then looking at a gorgeous day for the 4th of July. I'll have the details in the full forecast. For now, Andrea, back to you. We'll talk to you soon, Alex. Lake Wasoda was packed with boaters this afternoon enjoying the beautiful weather. But with those extra boaters comes extra safety issues. Megan Weebold shows us how the Sheriff's Department keeps the water safe in Chippewa County. It's a gorgeous lake, a gorgeous day, and we just got a new boat. As boaters hit the water on Sunday, so did the Chippewa County Sheriff's Department. Well, hi guys, I'm Deputy Williams with the Sheriff's Department. How you doing? Good. And the reason I'm stopping you is because of the uh, Sloan Awake area here. And on busy weekends like the 4th of July, safety becomes a concern. You know, like here, I'm just looking to see if there's an observer in that boat for the tuber. We'll see that every now and then where they won't have a, an observer in the boat. Um, pro probably the biggest thing that we see is people are just unaware of the law. Boating is not something that people do all the time and especially on these holiday weekends like this. So a lot of them are just unaware of the laws. That's why Deputy Williams recommends everyone, not just those behind the wheel, take a boater safety course. For a lot of people, you know, they may only get out on the lakes one or two weekends of the year. And so they just really aren't that familiar with, with the laws and, and how to safely operate boats in congested lakes that we have around Wisconsin. 
Some boaters are taking that advice. I grew up as a boater. My husband's always been a boater, but our kids are taking boater safety, so we're, we want everybody to be safe. We definitely like to see the waters being used, and, and we like to be busy, but you know, we, at the same time, we also want everybody to be safe out here, too. In Chippewa County, Megan Weevil, WQOW News 18. During a typical weekend, Deputy Williams says he usually hands out four to six tickets. Those numbers increase during busy weekends like the 4th of July. Boaters are most often cited for safety violations, for example, not having enough life vests on board. In national news, President Obama's right-hand man heads to Chicago to pick up some heavy hitter support for 2012. Here you can see Vice President Joe Biden at a meeting of one of the nation's largest teachers unions, the National Education Association members. The stop comes just one day before the union is expected to decide if it will endorse President Obama in the upcoming election. At the event, Biden slammed Republicans, saying they've launched an attack on education. He says they shouldn't be playing games with the nation's future. The way some people talk about our children, as if they're somewhere else from some other place. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our children. These are not someone else's children. These are America's children. These children are the kite strings that lift our national ambitions aloft. And in the end, in the end, we will be judged by whether or not we've honored our obligation to our children. In the past, the Obama administration has called for many reforms in the education system that are centered around teachers. Biden assured union members today that the president is on their side. The Minnesota Zoo has reopened despite the state government's shutdown, thanks to a judge's ruling earlier this weekend. The zoo in Apple Valley opened at 9 a.m. today. Although the zoo isn't a core function of state government, it doesn't require a legislative appropriation to operate, the judge said. Other attractions like state parks remain closed. Even industries like logging are grinding to a halt because those trees are on public property. In all, 25,000 state workers have been laid off. I'm not getting an income now. I don't think any of them should think it necessary for them to have an income either until this is settled. Minnesota is the first state to actually shut down much of its government because of a budget crisis. The Democratic governor and legislative Republicans are deadlocked over a $5 billion budget deficit. Republicans have refused to consider any tax hike. Budget talks aren't expected to resume until at least Tuesday. Crews are trying to clean up crude oil in Montana's Yellowstone River after an ExxonMobil pipeline burst, spewing thousands of gallons of crude oil. The spill created a 25-mile-long slick. A representative from the Environmental Protection Agency says fast flows in the flooding river could help reduce the damage done to crops and wildlife. New Mexico officials report no sign of unusual radiation levels in an area near Los Alamos where a huge wildfire has been burning. The blaze raised concerns because it's close to a nuclear lab. The town was evacuated nearly a week ago as the wildfire approached. Rain has helped firefighters enough that about 12,000 residents were allowed to return home today. Back in the Chippewa Valley, a food dehydrator causes thousands in fire damages at an Eau Claire home. The fire department says it happened Saturday morning on Omaha Street. The homeowner heard a noise and then saw smoke. She called 911 and the fire department quickly put out the flames. Damage was contained to the basement. A children's book author with strong ties to western Wisconsin is releasing her fourth book. Julie Bovey lives in Mondovi and writes books for young readers. Her stories tell about a fourth grade girl and her friends. She says the inspiration came from her own daughter who is now in college. She would have friends over to the house, lots of little girls over for sleepovers and birthday parties. And so I would always be kind of, you know, listening in <laughs> to their conversations, taking notes sometimes. Julie's books have sold around 100,000 copies across the U.S. Her new book comes out this month. She'll hold a book signing at Borders in Eau Claire, Saturday, July 16th. Local law enforcement has an important reminder for you ahead of tomorrow's Independence Day celebrations. We'll fill you in after the break. Plus, mud was flying at a local park this weekend. We'll take you to the 16th annual racing event when we return right here on WQOW News 18.
trucks of all sizes revved up their engines to race at Pioneer Park this weekend. Dozens of drivers took part in the 16th annual event. Many could get up to 120 miles per hour and get this under two seconds. Spectators watched from a safe distance. It's a family affair. You see both young and old here. We really cater to the young kids because they really enjoy these high-powered racers that go through the mud. That's what it's all about. And we have a lot of grandpa and grandmas that bring them out here. And, of course, mom and dad come too. Many of the people behind the wheel on Saturday were also female. My husband's done it for years, and then we got married, and then that's when I started doing it. Uh, before that, I guess we've always kind of been a kind of been a little bit of a tom girl at heart. I've always had uh, dirt bikes and four wheelers and all that kind of stuff. The event was put on by the Central Mud Racing Association. Three people were hurt Saturday evening after a fireworks accident in southern Wisconsin. Police say it happened a little before 10 p.m. in the village of Arena. That's about 30 miles west of Madison. Two people were transported for serious injuries and one was released at the scene with minor injuries. Local law enforcement wants you to be safe this weekend and that's why they're reminding everyone about fireworks laws. Altoona police say if you plan on celebrating with fireworks, contact City Hall to get a permit first. You need a permit to use fireworks fireworks that shoot into the air. Anyone who breaks the law could be fined $170. Altoona police say they'll give out tickets if they're called out to the same place twice. In Eau Claire, a ticket will cost you $215. At the box office this weekend, Transformers robots lost some of their money st making power but still managed to deliver the biggest opening weekend uh, so far this year. Transformers Dark of the Moon took in $97.4 million, beating out the $90 million debut of Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. Cars 2 dropped behind to second place. The Disney Pixar film lost major momentum in its second weekend, pulling in $25 million. And rounding out third, Bad Teacher, a comedy starring Cameron Diaz, brought in $14 million. Keep it here. We're back with the rest of your holiday weekend forecast and a look at the week ahead right after the break. Hey, Doug. Hey, John. What's up with your place? Joan's on this all natural kick. <laughs> That's a goat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, John. Hi. Do you have to go all out to go all natural? Not with Hormel Natural Choice Sandwich Meat. Great taste, no preservatives. Hormel, life better served. Toyota Care, the first maintenance plan offered by... Now, from the WQOW News 18 forecast team, weather with meteorologist Alex Kirshner. Well, so far we've had or quite an enjoyable holiday weekend. The weather stayed sunny and warm, and we'll continue to have that trend go into the 4th of July itself after a clear and comfortable evening. Seasonable ahead for next week, so temperatures not changing much, though we do have some thunderstorms to mix things up as we get into the work week. The highs today managed to make it into the middle 80s outside, a few cool degrees cooler than the day previous, but still very seasonable and very comfortable outside for this time of year. Picture perfect weather outside of you to get a chance to get out and enjoy it. Temperatures right now have cooled off a little bit. If you're stepping outside in Nielsville, we're at 75 degrees, 80 in Black River Falls, cooling down to 72 in Rice Lake, as well as Ellsville, or Ellsworth, excuse me, and 81 in Augusta. Uh, Tower Cam has pretty clear and dry conditions outside. As of right now, we'll continue to have conditions stay just like this throughout the overnight. We'll continue to have clear skies and pressure staying steady with the relative humidity creeping up just a bit as we have dew points mostly in the 60s. So a little more humid outside this evening. 75 is the current temperature in Eau Claire. Satellite and radar around the nation, not much going on. We have high pressure sitting right on top of Wisconsin. And as a result, that's why we're seeing those clear conditions. Storms to our south is the reason why we're seeing some cloud cover creep in enough moisture in the atmosphere to get those going. But we're going to have to wait until about Tuesday for this weather system over Alberta to reach us. So in between, all we're going to see is the clear skies as we see as of right now over the past six hours. We're not seeing much outside some cloud cover to the south of us. So lows tonight will be seasonable down into the lower 60s, pretty comfortable outside. And then reaching the middle 80s for tomorrow. A few degrees warmer, in fact, for today as we'll have more of a southerly wind direction as high pressure than moves towards the east of us. It's going to bring those winds around out of the south 
and continue to bring us sunny skies as well as some southerly winds to bring temperatures up just a bit. Throughout the day on the 4th of July, still seeing sunny skies should be clear into the evening hours, which is perfect for fireworks. Tuesday, though, a cold front starts to transition across the Chippewa Valley, and that's going to bring in some rainfall. Scattered showers and thunderstorms, in fact, erupting along the front, but then high pressure moves in after that. That's going to clear the skies out again for Wednesday, so we've got more sunshine in the forecast. Tonight, down to 61 degrees, just a few clouds out there, cool and quiet with winds staying light. If you're getting up to go to the parade tomorrow, we're looking at temperatures pretty nice outside, already at 80, so a little warm by 10 a.m. Should be in the middle 80s by the noon hour. The forecast after that should reach a high of 86 under those sunny skies. The southerly winds at 69 miles per hour, and then for tomorrow night, great conditions outside, comfortable and clear with a low of 64. Your extended forecast has rain then on Tuesday ahead of that cold front. It's going to drop temperatures down for the middle of the week, but then staying clear after that as high pressure moves in. We do have another chance for showers and storms late in the week on Saturday and Sunday with highs staying in the middle 80s. So a great forecast over the next several days. We've got a lot of sunshine in it, some rain to keep the grass green, and you can't ask for a better forecast for the 4th of July, Andrea. 86 and sunny. You can't ask for better. Thanks, Alex. Coming up in sports, we'll have more details on Wisconsin's decision to withdraw its scholarship offer from Regis senior Heather Bovey. And on the diamond, the Express looked to keep its first half playoff hopes alive against Wisconsin Rapids. Stephen Kelly has highlights next in sports. WQOW News 18 at 10 continues with Stephen Kelly and sports. The Express snapped a five-game losing streak last night, beating up on Wisconsin Rapids 7-3. The win was important because it moves Eau Claire into second place in a congested South Division, sitting just two games behind Madison with four to play. The Express need to continue winning to keep their first half playoff hopes alive. Taking on Wisconsin Rapids tonight from Witter Field. Express up 3-1 in the third. Kyle Peterson sends a sharp shot to Travis Wilcox. He's going to start the 5-4-3 double play. Express get out of the inning. It threatened in the fourth, but Ryan Schober going to line out to the pitch. That'll end the inning, sixth inning now. And Wilcox going to send this down the line, but check out Brandon Hole climbing the ladder and making that catch. Nice play. Still in the sixth, Justin Veely bloops one into right, but Sam Montgomery makes the sliding catch for the out. Raptors can make all the nice defensive plays they want, though, because it's Express taking the game. They win 5-1, to one, moving them within a game of first place. So let's take a look at those South Division standings. Madison falls today to Battle Creek, dropping to just one game up. Eau Claire leads three teams tied for second place. The Express and Mallards begin a three-game series starting tomorrow. Now just remember, because of 4th of July, the first pitch has been moved up to 6:05. MLB All-Star teams were announced earlier today, and for the first time in team history, the Brewers have three players starting in the game. Ricky Weeks, Ryan Braun, and Prince Fielder are all named to the squad, but that game is two weeks away. The focus for the crew right now is trying to figure out Minnesota. Last night, it took eight straight runs for the Brewers to escape with the win. What will happen today? Well, this will happen. Jim Tomei gets a hold of the Zach Granke pitch, and it's not coming back. His 495th of his career, it is one zip Twinkies. But in the third, Mark Kotze says anything you can hit I can hit farther. A solo shot for Kotze. And Milwaukee ties it up at one. Then in the fourth inning, two men aboard. Kotze sends a rocket to right. This one's not going to clear the fence, but it will bounce off of it. Michael Kadir can't handle it. Two runs come in. It's 5-1 crew lead. But the good times would not last long. Two men on Renee Tassoni brought his bat to this party, and he is not afraid to use it. A three-run bomb. Lead cut to two. One-run game in the seventh. Not anymore. Danny Valencia to left. Kotze loses the ball. That will allow all three runs to come in to score. And the Brewers drop a tough one, 9-7. to seven. Milwaukee has lost five of its last six games. Despite, lose, despite leading her team to the Division Four state title on the Badgers' home court, Regis senior Heather Bovey tells sports director Bob Bradovich she will no longer be attending Wisconsin. Bovey committed to UW following her freshman season, but that was with Lisa Stone as the head coach. Bovey was told by new coach Bobby Kelsey that the scholarship offer has been withdrawn. Bovey averaged 18 points this season and earned most valuable player honors at the state tournament. Bovey tells us Green Bay, North Dakota, and South Dakota State have already made scholarship offers. The rain 
came down hard this Friday, but the races at Red Cedar Speedway went on. Track officials were able to get four of the five feature races in. It was also kids night at the track. I got a chance to ride in a car with one of the youngest racers at Red Cedar, Gunnar Watkins, who says it takes a lot of time and effort to get a car ready for race day. It's seven days of hard work, just getting everything prepared for just the 25, 30 minutes of what you get to go out there and race it, but it's a lot of fun. Now be sure to check out my story from inside the car this Thursday at 6 on Red Cedar Report. Let's take a look at those results from Friday's races. Kevin Adams repeats as modified champion. Race like Shane Kissling takes the super stocks. Midwest Modified goes to Shane Halapka and Jason Havel takes the pure stocks. It was an exciting finish at the Coke 0400 last night at Daytona, Daytona Speedway. Eau Claire's Paul Menard led five laps and would go on to finish eight. Wisconsin native Matt Kenseth was looking to take his second win in three races. He led 14 laps, including with just seven laps to go, but in the end it was Kent playing the part of a good teammate, pushing David Reagan across the finish line in this two draft system that has become Daytona. Kansas says you're forced to work with another driver. Yeah, we have really, uh, really fast cars together. Um, you know, it's almost like you're you're a team. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's almost like the two cars are one car. So in a way, I feel like we, we won. Now, he might not have one, but he did help his point total. Here are your updated Sprint Cup standings. Kevin Harvick is in first. Carl Edwards is second. Kenseth is tied for fifth. Eau Claire's Paul Menard is 16th. He is 18 points from qualifying for NASCAR's playoff, the chase for the Sprint Cup. And that'll do it for sports. Andrea Zinesk with Health Watch. Stylish. A potential salmonella outbreak has prompted a multi-state recall of sprouts. The FDA is urging people not to eat alfalfa or spicy sprouts from evergreen fresh sprouts and evergreen produce. There have been at least 21 reported cases of salmonella tied to the sprouts in Washington State, Montana, Idaho, North Dakota and New Jersey. The CDC says three of those people have been hospitalized. No one has died. The 4th of July means food, fireworks and fun, but how can you keep from getting sick? In tonight's Health Watch, Nanette Sosa reports on three common reasons people end up in the emergency room after holiday celebrations go wrong. Whether at home or traveling, don't spoil your holiday with a side trip here to your local emergency room from something that is preventable. ER physicians say they see an increase in patients in the summer from several common conditions when more people are outside. By planning ahead, you can stay healthy. First, drink plenty of water. Both alcohol and caffeine share one thing in common, that's that they dehydrate you. Dr. Ricardo Martinez also suggests sipping sports drinks, which contain electrolytes. If you're drinking beer, also drink water. Foodborne illness is another culprit. Wash your hands often when preparing your meal. Afterwards, put leftovers away. It's important to refrigerate things often in order to retard the growth of bacteria and keep the food safe. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says food should be refrigerated within two hours or one hour if it's above 90 degrees out. And overheating from too much sun is a real threat. So making sure that you have light, loose, fitting uh, clothing, make sure you have wide brim hats that protect the head and shade the face and head where a lot of your blood is, and making sure that you use sunblock and sunscreen to protect your skin are important tips for your safety. And important tips for a holiday free from medical emergency. I'm Nanette Sosa. We'll be right back. Now at AMW, get this all American combo box with a Papa Burger single, fries, and a large drink. And get three entries in our Rip to Ride sweepstakes for your chance to win one of eight Harley Davidson Sportster 48 motorcycles. So hurry in before yours gets away. I think we need charter internet. You know, for school, so that I can. Research my English papers, expand my knowledge of physics. <laughs> you bring up a lot of good points, honey. I think we should get it. Absolutely. With super fast internet speeds, kids can do more this school year, like homework. Let it all in with Charter. Get Charter Internet Express for $29.99 a month for up to 12 months. Plus, get Charter Cloud Drive free for the first 90 days. Do your legs ache and feel heavy? It could be from your varicose veins. For more details on Marshfield Clinic Vein Services, visit makeachangetoday.org. Your arsenal is well prepared. They're on the edge of their folding chairs. From the moment that first fuse is lit, it's a night they won't forget.
Join WQOW each Sunday for the Grace Lutheran Church Service. The Grace Lutheran Church Service with Pastor Rolf Nestigan. Sunday mornings at 1030 on WQOW 18. Keith brings not only 25 years of experience in broadcast journalism, but all of it here in the Chippewa Valley. You cannot overstate the importance of experience in a newsroom. It's not only to our benefit uh, for journalists in the newsroom, but it's to our viewers as well. I've been doing news on the radio in western Wisconsin for 30 years now. Now's a chance finally for people to see the, the face behind the voice, for better or worse. Check out this Eastern Rhode Island house all decked out for the 4th of July. But it's not just to celebrate America's independence. The homeowner says he set up all these flags outside his home to pay tribute to the people who lost their lives during the 9-11 terror attacks. There are nearly 3,000 American flags in his yard, each bearing the name of a victim of the attacks. You know, I was never in the service, and that's, uh, that's a big regret of mine. So I like to show my patriotism, my appreciation of the troops. And, uh, years past we've done uh, everything for the troops and this year we thought it would be appropriate for the for the 10 year anniversary of 9-11. The homeowner says it took 15 people more than six hours to write all the names on the flags. Very impressive. Absolutely. And 4th of July celebrations this weekend of course wouldn't be complete without fireworks and there are plenty to go around so we're gonna let you know when and where they're taking place in Eau Claire. The fireworks can be viewed from Carson Park, Phoenix Park, Half Moon Lake, and the Lakeview Cemetery. Festival Foods Fireworks Extravaganza starts at 10 p.m. And before those fireworks start, you might want to head out to Carson Park for the Express and Predators are in action. That's right. Have a great night. Is there a sports story you want to see again? News 18 has local highlights, sports overtime recaps, pro sports, and much more. All on the sports page at WQOW.com.